In this video we're going to check out the new Piotnet Forms version 2.0 which is still in beta. Hi, my name is Stratos and I'm constantly producing video tutorials about WordPress. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. As you can see from the change log, this is fairly new product and we are still in the beta 2 version. Let's go into the documentation and we're going to see that we have already the version 2 documentation here, which is nice to see that they have already added the documentation even before the official release of the version 2. Let's go into the website that we're going to play with the plugin and let's start with the settings first. Let's open the settings in a new tab. We're going to see that they have redesigned the whole uh, user interface as you can see, better colors and we're going to see also inside the forms that we have different layout. If you have worked with the version 1 you will immediately see the differences. Let's go into the general, we have the disable form CSS and disable verify CSS, this is if you have problems with your forms. Integration, this is the new integration page. And then we have also the about which is just links for tutorial support and reviews. Let's go into the forms, let's close that and let's go into the forms. Here we have a form that I have created, test form, and you can of course export that. You can duplicate, we can edit that with Piotent Forms. Uh, this edit with Oxygen is only because I haven't limited the Oxygen uh, edit into the Piotent Forms. I can do that into Oxygen settings. And then you have the view, trust, quick edit, and edit. And we're going to click the add new, and we're going to be welcomed with this screen. As you can see here, we can, uh, enter the form that we want so you can name the form here and you can start with the template or create a blank form you can also search for templates once those templates are going to be uh, more in number then the search will going to serve us in a functionality at this moment i don't think that the search is quicker so we have some templates like simple contact form we have conversional form which basically uh, uses the steps so you can uh, type something then go into the next page and type something different then we have the uh, simple multi-step form we have calculation form loan calculator form conditional logic front end uh, post submission form repeated fills label animation inline fills stripe subscription and stripe subscription with plan selection if you select anything here and click the view demo it will open up in a new tab which is nice to see that it automatically opens in a new tab and you can see how the form is looking inside the official uh, Peernet Forms website. So I'm looking for a new project request, media inquiry, something else. I'm going to click into the new project and it will immediately take me to the next step, which is uh, what, what uh, what's your name? And I'm going to hit here Stratos. And as you can see, it says hit enter. So I'm going to hit enter and we'll go into the next step. And then you can add your email and then hit enter or press submit. Let's close that and go back. And here you can also import a template that you have already created in another website and you have export that to reuse it somewhere else. So let's start with the blank form. Let's create a blank template. And this is how now the layout looks. Now, the first thing I did once I was here, I was going to into these three dots and then go into the dark mode. This is how it looked when I first uh, launched it. And then I went here and click the dark mode because I like it better. So if it looks different for you, then just go and select the dark mode if you want that. Let's start by the layout. And here you will see that the drop widgets here has a different font than what is default font for these forms, but it basically inherits the form that you have in your theme. In my case, it inherits the form that I have added in Oxygen Builder. So it's nice to see that it's already grabbing the font. And of course, I can change the font if I want, but I do like the integration immediately of the font that I have globally set inside my website. If I go into the plus here, I can just click it and I will see all the uh, widgets that I have here in order to add them inside my form. Then I have here the navigator. Of course, uh, I will see some bugs in my form. This is still in beta, so it's okay to see some bugs and some things that are not going to work. This is the undo and redo functionality. After that, we have the name that we can change by double clicking and type something different. 
And then we have here the visibility control. So we have here the uh, tablet visibility, tablet view, not visibility, and then the mobile view. And of course, you can change the layout just for the mobile or the tablet view if you want. And then, of course, back to the desktop view. After that, we have here a button that will hide the WordPress bar here and it will go full screen. As you can see here, it also hides the admin bar uh, on top, which is nice. And I can select also here the left arrow and I will hide also the left bar from the font and I will have full screen of my font of my form. Let's click that again and it will go back how, how it was to be. Let's click save and it will save the form. After that, we have the preview, which you can click and it will open up in a new tab, which is nice. And you can see the form that you have already created. And then we have the three dots, which is basically more settings. I'm going to touch those once I add a simple form inside here. So let's add first a section. After that, I'm going back to the plus and I'm going to add a field. And as you can see, now you don't have to uh, type the name of the form in order for all the fields to work. They have removed that. If you had the pro version, it will automatically be generated, but you don't have that at this uh, version. So let's change the field name to something more appropriate, name, and then the label will be name and the placeholder will be type your name. After that, I'm going to duplicate the column. So I will have a different field here. I'm going to click that. And after that, let's go for the field ID. And here will be last name, last name. Label will be last name. And placeholder will be type your last name. Okay, let's duplicate the whole row. Let's click here. And this will change into email. Label will be email. And placeholder, of course, type your email. And I'm going to change the type into email. And let's go for the second column. Let's change that to phone. Label will be phone number and type your phone number. After that, I'm going to change the type into a number a telephone. Let's save that. And already you can see some bugs here. As you can see, this has changed the uh, width. So even though I just duplicate the row, the first row, you can see that the columns are uh, different. Let's go now and add a new uh, section. And here I'm going to add a new field. Let's change the field ID to message. Now it feels a little slow. Uh, I first type something and then it takes some time to appear in my screen. So uh, keep in mind that, of course, since it's a bit of version, uh, everything that you see, it's not officially launched and not completely finished. So hopefully everything will be fixed before the official version released. Label is message. And the placeholder will be type your message, type your message. And as you add more fields inside the form, you will see that the more fields you add, the slower uh, the form will come into the functionality. You will see that you will type something and it will take more time to appear. Let's add also a button. And this will be the submit button. Okay, it doesn't want to work. I'm going to do it without the mouse, just in case. No. Okay, we did that. Let's wait. Okay, and then we have the text will will be sent now. 
just change that and I'm not going to add any icons or do anything different inside here let's leave uh, everything as they are let's just change that type your message here from text to a text area something like that and let's save that now if I go into the preview and refresh here I will see the form here and how it looks and as you can see this is how it looks now the set now button went straight into the left because I haven't added that into a section so let's do that let's add a section here and let's add the send now button inside the section let's save that and let's go and refresh and see if it's going to go underneath the font as you can see now it's working okay let's go back into the form and let's save one more time and let's see what we have now here we have the style for the section of course because this section is selected whatever you select here you will see all the things that you can change from the widget or the section or whatever you have selected if you have used elementor of course this will look pretty familiar we have three tabs settings style and advanced settings are the more common settings that you're going to change then we have the style how it looks this particular field and then we have the advanced where you can change more things like margin padding margin padding and more things like size box shadow and everything else now if I go into here uh, we have also the global settings which is nice to see that we have global settings integrated so I change some things here and it will go and change in all the forms that I have created in the website let's go and change the field label and we're going for the text color and let's go for a uh, red let's go for the field and I'm going to change the background color to a little bit more gray and for the text color let's give it black And I think we're okay with that. And let's go for the button. Cancel. Let's go and select, uh, sorry, from the settings, the global settings. Let's go for the submit button and let's change the background color to something like green, maybe, and the text color to black. So this is not for just submit button, but for any buttons that will come inside the form. But these are global settings so it will go and change all the forms across the website that I have created now I have also here at different settings this is the form settings which means that if you select the form settings uh, logical it says that this will go and replace all the settings from the global settings and those will be integrated those will be for this particular form but in this case this not working uh, of course this is again because it's a better form and if I go and select the label and change that to something like blue you will see that nothing happens it's still grabbing the settings from the global form and you have to go into the global settings and delete that in order to see the blue color inside the text color here so uh, hopefully this will also be fixed once the official release will be uh, updated Okay, let's go into the form entries and this will go into the uh, Peertnet database as you can see. So you will be able to see the visitors that have already uh, submitted the form. Let's close that and let's open that again. And you can also see that we have also export template so we can export the form and import that in a new website, in a different website. Now, if I go into the... Uh, phone view i can select here the column let's select the column and then i can go into the column and change the settings for the column and it will grab uh, the width only for the mobile view so i'm going to select the column width to be 100 percent and then i can go and do the same for the other settings and this will only be integrated into the view that i have selected so if i go back to the pc you will see that it has 50 percent of the column width which is nice now what i'm going to do is add the form step and we're going to see how it works i'm going to add that at the bottom and as you can see i have here the previous and next and also I have here the uh, previous and submit and on top I have here the progress bar 
Let's go first to the progress bar. And here I have the disabled progress bar if you want to hide that from the uh, user, from the visitor. And then I have also the first step name. I'm going to add the first step name and whatever I add here, it will go underneath the first step right here. So let's add here the name. So this basically is the first step, which is the name. I need to uh, go and grab the previous and next here and put that underneath the uh, row that I have for the first step. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a new section between those two. And let's go here and add a new section. I'm going to add it inside here, if I can do that easily. Okay, I don't think I can. Okay, I did that. And now I can go and grab that into here. It didn't go. Okay, let's do that again. Again, it didn't go. One more time. Okay, now that I have selected uh, this one to go underneath the first uh, name and last name, the first row, I can select that and this is the second step. Next step title is uh, email. So as you can see, we have the second, which is the email. Let's save that and see how it looks already in the front end. Let's refresh here. And now, as you can see, I have here the name, the email, and here I can click next and go into the next step. Now, it's not working 100%, as you can see, uh, something is not working correctly, but this, of course, is again because we have a bit of version. Underneath that, we can go and create another step if we want, and uh, then go into the last step and put that in here, okay? And since we have create uh, a form for the multi-step, I'm going to delete the submit button because we have a submit button inside the steps. So let's delete that as well. And now we have something like that. Let's save that and refresh here. And as you can see, this is how it looks. Once the official release of the version 2, I'm sure I'm going to create some forms with multi-step and add some more functionality into these forms. But at this moment, it's nothing that I can do to fix those settings. So that was the video, guys. Uh, for me, I do like the plugin. I do like the update very much. And this is the tool that I'm using, the default tool that I'm using to create forms inside my websites because I do like the simplicity and the functionality that it gives me. So uh, please give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, and I'm sure I'm going to revisit the plugin once the official 2 version is released. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.